All right, uh, here with Nick Jackson uh, from Nick Jackson Speaks and Speak Love. I love that name, hmm. Speak Love. Nick, welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. So it's good to reconnect with you um, over the years. And um, you and I scheduled this call, I don't know, a week or so ago. And um, we initially scheduled this call for to talk about leadership. Um, and then today being Thursday, uh, with uh, the realization that there was a, a murder yesterday in Minneapolis, and I started, I've been challenged by Hannah and others the last 24 hours to kind of lean, lean in as a, you know, as I, I mentioned to you offline, uh, just a, a white dude uh, hmm. growing up on the west side um, that just, I just have my blinders on, Nick and just I'm just plowing through life and I hear something like what happened yesterday and I just I I just don't allow myself to go there and so as your friend um so the place that I don't want to go uh, that you're going there can you give people my like myself a perspective of what what happens to you when you hear um, what went down yesterday yeah that's so interesting that you said that because i really feel like the the general response and, and, and i'm not just saying this for the podcast i'm saying this because because it's just the truth I, I've, I've had a lot of especially white people reach out to me um in all i've had a lot of a lot of people that are, that are african americans uh that have contacted me on my my social media my instagram my facebook and want me to like get angry and fight um but this has been happening for years and so i'm like I'm not surprised. Like it's happened to me. It's happened. Like uh, I, I got family members that are dead. I have, um, you know. I mean, like this is a this is a normal occasion in the United States. And so since it's normal, and I I can't put my blinders on, right? It's a part of it's a part of my life. And so for other people that are like shocked, I'm like, where where have you been? You know what I'm saying? Like where? How could you? How could you have missed this? You know what I mean? But I mean, like. I'm glad that there's a, uh, I'm glad even on this podcast, because I know you care and I know that you're a very empathic person, you know, and you, you sometimes have to see it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and for me, even, even that, right. So, so if we're walking around telling a story, right. And, and, and the other people don't believe you, but you know, what's going on and you have to act a certain way to, to keep yourself and, and your family safe. And they don't even understand it. They don't, even, they don't, they don't, even, they don't, they don't even get it. You kind of lose not that you lose um, hope that they'll get it. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm not going to, and, and, and I don't want to say you don't want to waste your time in trying to explain to people who needed to be shown to them. But but you kind of feel like your your situation doesn't matter as much as theirs. And mm -hmm. so so what I try to do with my diversity and inclusion education and my speak love education that I bring to to uh, the masses is is educate people in love, and mm -hmm. that's sometimes what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're speaking, I'm thinking of uh, calluses that you build up on your hands if you work with your hands or uh, I'm a runner. I build up calluses on my feet that I mean, there's calluses that you could take a knife and you could cut me and I don't feel anything. Mm, right. Yeah. And so. It's interesting, um, you know, for you, when you hear things go down like yesterday, um, how you what you know viscerally what happens to your body and then for people like myself um what happens to my body and it's embarrassing as i'm I, as i'm saying things that i don't want to hear myself say is that like i mentioned a minute ago is that you know my the narrative that i tell myself uh is that i'm different than those white guys um and yet I wonder from your perspective, if you could speak, you know, as you speak um, transparently with me, what, what are some things that people that are your friends like me, I consider myself your friend, uh, mm -hmm. that I love you and I care about you. What are some things that I do um, that I don't even know that I'm doing that would suggest that I don't, I don't even, I don't even care. So it's interesting to me, right? Because I, I don't, I can't recall of something that Jerry Beerman specifically does. Um, 
on a daily basis or even by accident that that shows uh, that that you that you're you know putting blinders on or being disrespectful. I don't I don't I don't know I don't know that in particular, but but what I do know is that in certain times of my life I've I've been in situations where I was absolutely scared for my life, and um, you may have too, right? And so what what we could do is just ask questions and listen to one another and. Um, if we were to just start that way and, and just walk together, I, I know you're involved in the life Bible study. And one of the reasons why I make sure that I'm involved in the life Bible study is one to, to be in the conversation with professional um, um, executive white males. I want to know how you guys talk to one another. Uh, I want to see, I want to see how you guys interact. And it's very comfortable for you uh, to, to be in a Bible study with other white males, but I don't see very, very many of you in an all black Bible study. Right. And, and I don't see very many of you trying to incorporate yourself in the black culture unless you're trying to sell something, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Or, or unless you're trying to do community service, you feel what I'm saying? And yeah. so, and yeah. so it's a part of my life in, and, in, and, and there's a piece of it. There's a piece of, of my ethos. That's a little bit hurt and angry. I'm not going to lie. I mean, the speak love guy has some pain. Let me be honest with you. But I mean, like, I also have some, 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 uh, what do you call it? I have some ability to kind of let go and, and not, and not judge you if you, if you don't see something, but allow you support you when you do see it and, and, and love you in the process of coming to coming to recognition of, of what's going on in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. That's good. So as a leader, um, as a leader, you and I are, are used to, uh, getting a vision, right. Setting a course and getting stuff done. And so if you could, um, if you could speak to me to say, Hey, Jerry, and I think you just gave me some of the, some of the components, but, um, the first part is the first part you just challenged me on, um, is to feel like, can you, can you have empathy, Jerry? Can you put yourself, can you do something that's really close to impossible? Can you put yourself in a black man's shoes, Jerry, man, that's hard. That's hard. If I, the closer I can get to your shoes, then um, I, it's more likely that I'm going to feel. And then once I feel, then what do, what do I do? Like, what do I do? And and, uh, and coach me through this. What what do I do? It is. It, now, when I say this to you, you're going to be like, it can't be that simple, but it is, it is extremely, it is incredibly simple. Uh, you have a wife. I do. You have a daughter. Couple. Yeah. Right now. I bet you, you haven't been a woman a day in your life. I have not. Right. But, but you support them. Right. Yeah. And when, they, when they're going through issues, you probably listen to them. Right. And you, you probably uh, protect them and honor them and build into them because they're your family. Yeah. That's all we have to do. That's it, right? Extend the doors of your family. That's that's all it is. And once you extend the doors of your family, you recognize our, our we have so many things that are that are that are that are connected and so many things that are similar. And then there's some things that are different. How do I support you in what's different? I have to ask questions. I mean, this isn't like like two people speaking different languages. Like we live in the same country. We live, we live, we're neighbors with one another usually, you know. And so it's just allowing it, matter of fact, let me say it like this. The, I forgot if it was a father at Notre Dame or it was the president of Notre Dame, he had Barack Obama come and speak uh, in the beginning of Barack Obama's uh, session as president in the United States. This isn't a political thing. This is just that. And I was going to a Catholic school, College of Mount St. Joseph, and there was a huge uproar that the, the Catholic Church or the Notre Dame University, which is like the top level, um, you know, Catholic institution in the United States would allow, you know, Barack Obama, not because of his race, not because of his race, right? But because of his positioning on abortion, which is, you know, whatever, whatever you feel about it, I totally understand. And this guy said, and I'll never forget that, no, uh, Obama's speech was good. His, 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 he speaks well. But anyways, this guy said in a press conference, he said, how could, I how could I expect him to change or even understand my point of view until I allow him into my home and at my table? Mm. Totally different, right? And so, so he's trying to influence the president by inviting him into his home. That's deep, right? 
and and the more that you do that, and and that's what I do with with Speak Love. Uh, we people say we're motivational speakers, but we really we're about experiences. And and the same thing with Nick Jackson speaks. So I go to these corporate places. They want me to do diversity and inclusion, and they're used to diversity and inclusion being here's a picture and tell me what you see, and then and then we say you're wrong and you have biases, and but then we don't really explain how to how to get past the bias, right? It's like once you recognize that you're wrong, now it's it, it's actually used in a negative way so now i can manipulate you to to kind of feel bad and to step back and, and and that's not what i want you to do. i want you to bring your best to the table and so what we do is we challenge people to open up talk about your family talk about your life talk about talk about the things that are that are that, that you enjoy the things you, you dislike and all these kind of things and we have all of these we have multiple different experiences that we walk people through and at the end of the day they're like wow we're so we're so similar and then we could talk about bias right because once you recognize, especially when you're working with white people, if I go into a room all full of white people, dressed the way I dress, speaking the way I speak, right? Like I'm a, I'm a black guy from from the East Coast, right? And 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 I come in there, I, I I probably have a certain perception, right? So to break down that perception, it, instead of starting off talking about bias, let's talk about you and your story, because a lot of white people don't get to tell their story when we talk about bias, right? It, 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 that's 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 a grave mistake, right? Because if you're not telling your story, you're not listening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a conversation. So if you're not involved in the conversation, and, and especially people who think that, you know, this whole thing is all fluff and it doesn't matter, it's not really happening, then why in the world do I want to hear about it, right? But then once you get to tell your story, once you get to know you as an individual, then I can share with you who I am, right? Because now I've opened up my house to you. And that's, and that's what it, I mean. And I've had multiple run-ins with skinheads and clan members. I've sat with them and I've talked with them. Um, I've had family members that were murdered. My, 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 my good friend's cousin was burnt to death in front of their house and no one was charged with the crime. No one was charged with my cousin's crime. Like, like it's a part of our, I mean, I've, I've, I've had, I could go on and on and on for hours about egregious errors that I've seen from law enforcement, you know, and, and I still am challenged to, and commissioned to love them. And I learned this behavior from my grandparents in the civil rights movement. Like I learned this behavior by, by my grandparents who's, who knew people that were hung and burned in public, right? Like that's America, this is America, right? This is a part of our, 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 our flesh. And, and for us to it, ignore that, my parents, my parents, my dad couldn't get a job until affirmative action was put into place, right? And it's, it's so crazy. He didn't get more education. He didn't get more experience. He couldn't get experience. He, was, he had three degrees and he was working in a, in a, in a factory because he couldn't get hired anywhere as an engineer, right? And he has, now he has six degrees, right? But I mean, like at the time he had three degrees, he, he, was, he, was, he was on a doctorate level and he couldn't get a job, right? And, and so um, that's America. And, 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 and this is where I live. And I, and I recognize that sometimes I feel like I'm a guest in your house. And, and as a guest, uh, I'm going to invite you into my house and, and allow you to see where, where I live and what goes on in my life in a loving way. And that's how we make change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's so much that you just said there. One, one of the pieces, one of the pieces that I'm visualizing is, and you probably have seen this, um, where you look at the picture in one way and it's a, it's a, an old witch, it's the same picture and you look at it a little different way and it's a beautiful maiden. Um, you've seen those pictures where, you know, what do you see in this picture? And, um, I think for most of my friends, um, you know, that most of my friends, uh, and I was talking to you about the audience, you know, our sphere of influence. Um, I think most of our friends, myself included, and I'm, I'm really trying to really push in on my belief system over the last 24 hours is that I just don't see it. I just, mm. I, I just, I just don't see what you see. And so um, the first piece is the willingness to see something that you can't yet see. I, I think about the virus today. I can't see it. Um, and because I can't see it, um, then I almost act like it doesn't exist. And right. what I, what I, what I, what I feel convicted of not, I don't feel condemned, but I think convicted is the right word, is that, Jerry, you have got to spend the time to see um, what, Nick, um, what Nick sees. It's, it's important for 
me as a, as a leader to see, um, is important for me as your friend to see what you see. And then the second part that really is challenging to me right now is I'm thinking that, um, you know, being a person of faith, um, and Jesus is my, Jesus is the example that I'm supposed to emulate, right. To follow. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm thinking, I don't know where it is in the scripture, but where Jesus sat and he, you know, somebody shared a story and he wept, that Jesus wept and he was able to be present, um, and see, have empathy and see, um, the other person's perspective and to feel that, um, the weight of, feel the weight of that. And like I said, offline, you know, if you would have said to me, Jerry is a white dude, if you'd have said to me 24 hours ago, is a white dude, you're a part of the problem. Like your actions, sorry, Jerry, your actions are supporting the problem. I would have said to you 24 hours ago, I would have, I would have said, no, no, I'm not. And after talking to a couple of my buddies like you, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, that's, I am absolutely, um, and again, I'm throwing up in my mouth as I'm saying this, I am absolutely a part of the problem. Mm. So, um, so on behalf of, of your friends that love you, Nick, that are, um, have been blind, um, like myself, uh, it's embarrassing. Um, and so I'm sorry uh, that I've been blind. And I, I just pray that, you know, part of it is, um, part of it is people like yourself helping people like me um, navigate these waters that um, I didn't even, I wasn't even, I wasn't even aware of that I was a part of it. So. And, and I just want to say, I, I accept your apology and I, and I know you're not just doing this for the podcast. You know, I'm like, I know you're not just doing this for fans. I know this is truly how you feel. Um, and, and I appreciate you saying it, but to be quite honest with you, I don't, I don't need your sorry. I need your brotherhood. Right. And if you pay close attention to the story of Jesus, like it looks very similar, right? Like, like this, like the story of Jesus and and how he was persecuted and other people were persecuted, and then there was a system that was going on, and he was able to sit on the cross and say, I, that, 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 that I "Forgive them, for they know not what they do." Like, like, like you are forgiven, not from me. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you're, you're, it, it's not you, you're forgiven by God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and what we do in our companies, we take these tenets of the Bible and we bring these into commercial settings. It's just all it is, right? Because there's no real um, general, there's, there's, no, there's no consistent moral code, um, really, to be honest with you, outside of religion, right? Like with it, with, there's moral expectations, but there's no moral code. And so in the moral code, like this is how you act when you're persecuted. And then it's blessed are those who are persecuted, right? And so, so if you are persecuted, and, and if you look at, the civil rights movement of the 60s, the reason why they tied so closely to the word of God is because they match what they were going through, right? And so, so what we do, this is, this is providing us an opportunity to, to come to the cross together. And so I hate when people are, are being murdered. I hate that people are, are, are made to feel like they need to apologize for something they didn't even know that was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like that's, like, I don't know if that's where we need to go. It, and, and, and this is another thing. I know this is your podcast and, and I'm, I'm about to stop talking. You're good. Please, 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 right? As a white person, do not lower your expectations toward black people because of what you may feel you're sorry for in this world. Like the, the worst thing that could possibly happen is you pity me, right? Don't pity me, right? Fight beside me. I don't want your pity. You, matter of fact, I, 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 I if, if, if we were to look at the America as a whole, I feel like so much of, of the white culture is, 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 is neglecting the fact that these things are, these atrocities happen. And then another part of the culture is, is pitying black people. Don't pity me, right? I, I'm, an, I'm an educated, well-spoken entrepreneur that loves Jesus just like you. Like, and, 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 and together, not with our pity, right? But together with our, with our combined strength, Right? We can we can evangelize to the world. Like we we are we are we are extremely um 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 um, um, um outstandingly awesome. Yeah. I don't need pity. 
Amen. Amen. Good stuff. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Much love to you too, brother. Good man. Thanks for being with me today. Oh, no problem. No problem. Anytime. Anytime.